If the overall experience of teaching has been relatively negative for you, even though you actually like the act of teaching, it can be really confusing and frustrating. Maybe you're finding yourself just overall annoyed with your students more so than usual, and maybe you're complaining about them even more than before. And you're complaining about the parents as well, wondering what's wrong with them, how come they raise the kids this way, why are kids this way in general, and just overall you're feeling pretty disillusioned. But at the same time, you have these pockets of joy where it just seems like the stars align and somehow teaching has become enjoyable. Now what if all you had to do was tweak a few mindsets to make teaching more enjoyable and have it be just more predictable in general? What if you could think your way out of frustration. Well, it's actually possible. And in today's video, I'm sharing five ways that your past experiences in school is hurting your teaching. And of course, how to turn those around so that you can find yourself enjoying teaching more and more. And maybe you'll just be one of those teachers who never wants to quit. But first, one way to make yourself happy right now is to lovingly tap that like and subscribe button so that you won't miss any more videos because the more you come back, the more you're going to find yourself liking teaching. So part of the reason why we're frustrated with teaching is because our expectations don't align with the reality in front of us. We have an idea of how school should be or what we've experienced, but that's not actually what's happening every day. What we experienced when we were in school in a way taints the way that we see our students and how our classroom runs. It's sort of like the glasses through which we see everything. And if it isn't what we expect or what we experienced, we may start to feel really frustrated and, as I mentioned before, disillusioned about teaching in general. So the first way that our past is affecting our present is that we had traumatic experiences when we were in school. So you may have experienced something negative or traumatic while you were in school. Maybe you were bullied or a teacher was particularly mean to you, or maybe you were even in a classroom where the teacher had no classroom management and no control and everyone was crazy and you didn't get much of a learning experience. For me, one thing that was particularly traumatic was teachers who wanted students to compete against each other for the highest grade. So my teacher would post all of our scores and all of our grades on the wall and show our class ranking. And that sort of created this cutthroat environment where students were undercutting each other and trying to get a leg up on each other so that they could be at the top of the list. And my teacher would even reward those students that made it to the top with even more extra credit, which encouraged all of us to work even harder to kind of push each other down so that we can make it to the top. Now adding this to my parents also putting pressure on me, this made it where I was feeling very much inadequate, especially in the midst of my peers who were doing better than me overall. I was never at the top of my class. And so it just made me feel even more insecure about how I did, even though getting a 98% in the class was perfectly fine. But if you weren't getting 100, you weren't getting that extra credit. So then you weren't getting that 101 or 102. Or maybe you had a teacher who kind of had it out for you and picked on you. And so every time you were in their classroom, that gave you a lot of anxiety and it showed up in your own teaching where maybe there's someone that you see that kind of annoys you and the way that you treat them might be kind of unfair and negative. I'll be the first to admit that in the past, there have been students that just overall annoyed me. They weren't bad kids, but something about them just really annoyed me and I didn't treat them as nicely as the other kids. And I really hate to admit that, but I know that that was just a response to me being picked on and judged before. And so it was just one of those things that kind of manifested itself into my present situation. So how do we fix this? Well, I mentioned in my last two videos, one about our triggers and how it shows up in our classroom. And the video before that, where I talk about problematic student behavior. In a nutshell, you want to address your own triggers and your past trauma and really look at how it's affecting the way that you are today. And when you recognize those, then you can make a plan so that you show up better for your students so that you actually see them through a different lens. You see them in a different way because you realize that you're just reacting to what happened to you in the past. You can also get professional help. That way, when these negative emotions come up because of past traumatic events and they're kind of replaying currently in your teaching, you'll know how to better address those and how to better react to those so that you're not being negative or you're not 
snapping at your students. You're actually just not reacting at all. And this also helps you identify patterns in your students. Maybe they're experiencing the same thing that you did and you can keep them from being further traumatized and going down the same line that you did. So the next way that our past schooling is kind of negatively affecting our current teaching is having a limited understanding of the students in front of you. So this could be one of two ways. Maybe the students in front of you are particularly diverse. You've gone to an area where there are more students of color and maybe you didn't grow up around that or vice versa. Maybe you're used to a lot of diversity and you go to an area where there just really isn't. Or maybe you're just going somewhere where the culture is vastly different from what you grew up with or even the way that school is run is so different than what you grew up with. Now this can be a problem because you may project the prejudices and stereotypes that you had about the students that are in front of you. It's kind of hard to admit that you may have stereotyped people in this way or you may have had some prejudice about the way they talk or act or about that particular culture and now you're teaching that. And so when you are addressing the kids or even the way that you interact with them, you may be negative towards them because of the biases that you have or maybe you assume that they aren't capable of doing certain things because of those biases that you grew up with. It can be really hard to be an anti-bias teacher when what you grew up with, there was just a lot of bias towards certain groups of people. And you kind of have to undo that, especially if you go home to your family or your hometown and people still feel that way, but what you see in front of you is actually opposite from what everyone thinks. For example, when I moved to California, it was definitely a culture shock for me. I grew up in this little town, rural slash suburban town in Washington state. It was a Navy town where pretty much everyone was white and maybe a little sprinkling of Filipino. And that was pretty much it. So there were a lot of biases and stereotypes about other cultures that I developed because I wasn't around other types of ethnicities. I was kind of isolated in terms of what experiences and what I was exposed to. And of course, in an environment like that, you hear people talk about other cultures or other races because they don't understand either. So then when I moved to California, I came equipped with these biases. I hate to admit it, but it's just the environment that I grew up in. And so I didn't understand why students weren't focused on academics as much as I wanted them to be, or they were more focused on family more than I thought that they should be. And as I started to teach them, I started to realize that my biases were affecting how I treated them. My biases were affecting what I thought that they were capable of. And, you know, obviously I was ashamed of that, but luckily I caught it early enough that I realized that, you know what, this isn't right. Early on, I decided that my lack of understanding wasn't going to equal my lack of empathy for the students. It wasn't going to equal even more stereotypes and biases. So how can you solve this if you have these? And you know what? You pretty much all do to some extent. Well, the first thing you can do is just really learn about your students and their particular culture and just the environment that they are living in. Talk to other teachers, talk to your administrators, talk to people in the community and go to community events so that you could understand the values that are important to your particular student population. If your students speak a certain slang or vernacular, have them teach it to you. They think it's pretty fun when you don't know what certain things mean and they love to teach us, you know, you can play stupid like, oh, I didn't know what that meant. And they think it's kind of fun and kind of cool that we want to learn about that. You'll actually find that they're not that different from you and that they just do things a slightly different way or use slightly different terms, but they really at their core aren't that different from you and your family. So the third aspect of your schooling that's affecting how you show up today is that you had some really rigid and strict teachers. Now, some of you may have reacted positively to that. Maybe you did like the structure and the rigidity that your teacher had. Maybe you were someone who was a rule follower and so you really liked it when that teacher would impose consequences on other students. But maybe on the other hand, you didn't really like that, but in your mind, you thought that this was the right way to teach. And that may actually be showing up in how you teach. Maybe now you're the rigid and strict teacher because that's just what you knew. Or maybe when you did your student teaching, that particular teacher was strict and rigid and so you just followed them because you saw that somehow it 
worked, but really, is it working? Because compliance doesn't mean that students are actually learning. Compliance doesn't necessarily mean that students are engaged. In fact, I'm sure you found that you have a lot of students that are just going through the motions and faking it so that you'll leave them alone and out of fear of being hassled. But because you're just being strict and rigid, they have no incentive to want to do work for you other than fear. That's not really the way that we want to teach our students. You've also probably found that for some students, students, they don't care about fear. They don't care about consequences. And that can be really frustrating and infuriating. So if you have no other way of connecting with them other than being strict and giving them detention and just trying to scare them into behaving, it's going to be an uphill battle because there's no consequence that you can give them that will make them comply. So the solution to this is to take a look at your teaching and be open to change. Ask yourself if what you're doing is actually working in terms of student engagement and student learning. And also ask yourself, would you want to be in your classroom if you were a student? Would you want to be a student of a teacher who gives you detention for not bringing a pencil or someone who mocks you for not knowing an answer or someone who is always on your case because you slouch in your chair or have your hood on or something like that? Would you want to be in that teacher's classroom? And would you want to learn? Examine other teachers who maybe have a more relaxed way of doing things. Are they also seeing success? Are there students enjoying their class more? These are all things that you need to think about in terms of your teaching style and whether or not how you're teaching is actually having a positive effect on your students and their learning. So the next way that school may have kind of ruined the way that you teach is that you're resistant to change. And this shows up in your teaching in that you didn't like it when teachers had different styles of teaching and you just have like one way that you think that you're supposed to teach and you're not willing to divert from that. So this is similar to the previous one where you had a really rigid and strict teacher, except this is just where you think that there's only one way to teach students and you're inflexible about it. And that doesn't necessarily just mean that you're strict. It could also mean on the opposite end where you're too lenient. Maybe to you, you want everyone to just love each other and you love a chaotic classroom where there's like energy in the classroom and everyone's having fun and you're the cool teacher and it's the fun class. But in that chaotic environment, you also have students students who are misbehaving and are out of control and you have some students who maybe who are more introverted and they want a little more structure in the classroom and they're not thriving. I've actually seen classrooms like this where the teachers like it when the students are just sort of like walking around and talking to each other and it looks like they're learning. It looks like they're working but actually they spend most of the time socializing. There needs to be a balance in there where it's not just too strict or too loose but at the same time that requires the teacher to take a look at their own teaching methods and their own teaching philosophies. And honestly, a lot of teachers don't want to do that. So how can you change this? How can you be better about being flexible? Well, for one, just experiment. Maybe try it with just one class or for one little period of time. If you teach elementary, maybe just for like one subject where you're going to teach differently than you normally do. It doesn't mean that you have to change your personality because if you're a fun teacher, you can't make yourself be like more strict and serious and vice versa. If you are a more serious teacher, you can't make yourself crazy. Well, you can drive yourself crazy, but you can't make yourself act like a crazy teacher. But you can incorporate strategies a little bit at a time so that it feels more natural to you in the end. That way, you're kind of balancing that more structured type of teaching with a more open and engaging type of teaching. You can also talk to other colleagues or if you trust your admin, have them come and observe you and maybe give you some feedback on how you can switch up your teaching so that it's more engaging for your students, but at the same time, you can maintain a more controlled classroom. You can get your lesson taught. Now, the next aspect that may be affecting your teaching because of what you experienced in school is having a negative perception of student behavior. So maybe when you were in school, you were someone who behaved and it really irritated you when there was that misbehaving student, the one who would not be quiet, who was causing all kinds of trouble and who really upset the teacher. Or maybe you were that student who 
did all of those things. Either way, there are a lot of teachers right now who, when they see a student misbehaving, they see it as something personal or they see it as something about the student's personality. So either the student has it out for them and that's why they're misbehaving or the student is just a bad kid inherently and that's why they're misbehaving. Or maybe they even see like little things like students whispering in class is just like so bad in terms of behavior or if a student wants to get up and throw something away, they just can't handle that because it's just disrespectful to get up in the middle of class. Honestly, if you're someone who finds all of these little things that students do as negative and bad and annoying, that's probably something that you experienced when you went to school and now you're projecting it into your own classroom. Sometimes we just forget that kids are kids. We're going to act this way. It's pretty natural. And they also forget. Sometimes they are going to forget to ask if they can throw something away. Sometimes they're going to forget that they're not supposed to be talking when you're talking because they're in the middle of a conversation. Even as adults, we're actually worse than our students in so many ways. I'm sure in a staff meeting, you've seen people texting each other or scrolling on Instagram or Facebook where they're actually having a full-on conversation as the meeting is going on. And yet, when we see this in our classroom, we just cannot handle it. And it's just inconceivable that students would do that. So this is a problem because if you see every little thing as negative, you're going to feel negative all day long. That's just how it goes. And some students legitimately are not behaving in class. They are yelling across the room. They're throwing things across the room. They're talking back to you, things like that. But at that point, you have to then address the behavior and not necessarily think it's about the student and their personality. So how do we fix this? Well, first we need to develop good relationships with our students. I'm sure you've heard this many times that relationship building is pretty much the most important thing that you can do. But if you wanna do this on a sincere and deep level, this means being empathetic to your students and understanding why they're acting this way. Not necessarily just the misbehaving students. Why are the students who are really good and always listen to you, why do they behave that way? What is their motivation? This is important. And then how about the students who don't do anything in class? They just sit there and lean back in their seat. Why are they doing that? Is it because they're tired? Because they don't understand? Because they're bored? All of the above. And then for the students that act out in class, that are talking, that are trying to push your buttons, what's going on with them outside of your classroom that is causing them to act that way? What has happened to them in their schooling that is causing them to act that way? You can ask other teachers about how those students are acting in their classes, especially if you teach elementary, you can go back to the previous teacher and find out if this is something that they saw. And you can even ask like, you know, what worked? What helped them so that they would behave better or perform better in class? If you have them in your school, you can also ask the counselors, do they know anything about what's happening at home or why a student might be behaving this way? And don't be afraid to ask the parents. You just have to phrase it nicely. Don't say, what's wrong with your kid? You can say, I've noticed that, you know, Johnny has a tendency to talk a lot in class and he has a really hard time sitting still. Or you can say, I noticed that Allison doesn't want to do any of her work. And even though I explained it to her, she just kind of sits there. Is this something that you've seen before? Or is there something happening at home? And sometimes the parents will tell you, yeah, something is happening at home or if you've noticed this pattern and they can actually give you some insight so that you can come up with a solution. The key here is to be empathetic to your students and to remember what it was like to be a student, to be confused and have no control and like have your hormones raging and things like that. Just remember what it was like. And rather than thinking of all of the shoulds in terms of behavior, they should, 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 should. Instead, ask yourself, what is the reality of how they're going to behave? What is the reality of someone at this age developmentally? And then see if your expectations can more align with what is the reality in front of you. You're going to find yourself being a little less frustrated. I mean, we can't help what school was like for us and how it affects us now. But what we can help is how our teaching is going to affect our students in the present and especially in their future. If you had a negative experience in school, you shouldn't be passing it on to your students so that they can have that same negative experience and end up hating education. What we want to do is have an environment that is inviting and welcoming, an environment that fosters learning and acceptance, and an environment that does teach them some responsibility and 
structure, but not in a way that uses fear. When we can come to peace with what's in front of us, even though it's not something that we're comfortable with, that we're used to, or maybe even that we think is right. When we can come to peace with it and learn how to work with it, instead of constantly working against it and trying to mold these kids in a way that doesn't align with who they are, we can finally come to peace with all of this. That's when we can actually find joy in teaching. And that's actually one of the reasons why I still love teaching after 21 years and I have no intention of quitting because I stopped letting myself get upset by all the little things that kind of affected me from my past. I don't let the way that I was taught and the way that things were when I was in school affect how my students are in front of me and how I see them. So I'm curious, let me know in the comments which of these five ways that our past may be affecting our current situation. Which of these five are maybe affecting you right now? Which one maybe are you guilty of? Because I can tell you in some way, I've been guilty of all of them at some point in my teaching. And I think the first step in making things better is to just kind of like address it and confront it and then work on it. Now, if you need more help with your students being super frustrating in your classroom, then be sure to check out this video so that you can understand not only why they're frustrating you, but how to actually fix it.